Today we have a 15 inch 2010 MacBook Pro that is in for constant shutdown, also known as kernel panics. This is actually a very prevalent issue on the 15 inch mid 2010 MacBook Pro. Essentially there is a tantalum capacitor uh, that is not properly doing its job, it's partially failing. When that happens it actually causes the computer to um, kernel panic, it, it freaks out. And we look at the capacitor directly on the schematic that capacitor is connected to our frame buffer regulator. So whenever it starts to get the wrong voltage uh, between 1.8, 1.55, 1.35, it kind of freaks out and causes the computer to restart. So to resolve this issue, we have to end up replacing the capacitor with the same rating capacitor. However, instead of a tantalum, we are going to be using a polymer ca uh, capacitor. So the capacitor specifically is C9560, and we have replacement capacitors here from Lewis Rossman's shop online, which is store.rossmangroup.com. He sells special capacitors that fill in this, the right spot necessary for this job. So let me go ahead and switch it over to our other camera. And I'll try to get this as best as I can. So right now I just have this kind of laying on top of a super drive. I'll turn the brightness up all the way. So normally the capacitor in question is this tiny little guy right here. And as you can tell by the size difference, this one's about two and a half times larger. So it just seems to not fail as common as this tiny little one of my tweezers right here. So the special capacitors that we get are already designed to work for both a normal size or a normal pitch uh, capacitor hole, uh, which would be either right here on this side, right here, we're gonna have ground on this side, and then we're gonna have voltage on this side. Well, since this is a smaller capacitor to get things to fit into place, this right here is also ground. What we would have to do in the past is we would actually have to scratch into the board to make a larger uh, standoff, I guess you could say, for the capacitor. Uh, instead, we have these special capacitors here that have pretty much resolved that issue. We no longer have to scratch into boards. With that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and take the board out of this computer and begin replacing that capacitor. This one actually just came in probably about an hour ago, so I have not had enough time to pull out the board yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. This here is our logic board. This is going to be our 820-2850 and I will show you exactly where that capacitor is on this specific board. So it's on the underside so we have to pull the board out for this. We can't uh, cheat and leave the board in the top case itself. So the capacitor itself is going to be right next to the CPU right about here, but I'm going to go ahead and put it under our microscope camera so that you can actually see a lot better. There is our troublemaker right there. Being that this is directly next to our processor, we definitely don't want to apply too much heat just because we don't want to end up reflowing the processor and getting a whole bunch of solder balls bridged together and ultimately killing the processor. For this, we actually use micro tweezers and a heat gun, but we use the heat gun at very, very low heat. So just to show you real quick what our tweezers here look like, our camera got a little offset. 
It's basically two soldering irons that are put together in tweezers. So we're just going to use these to ply off, pry off that capacitor. I just need to go ahead and switch out. Okay. Turn on our fume extractor. We don't like leaded fumes in the air. And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some flux. The flux is gonna allow the joints that the capacitor are on to melt easier. I actually need to switch out the tips on my soldering station real quick. Okay. Don't want to use too big of a tip. We want to isolate our heat. Because once you, you heat up the CPU, it's pretty much game over for the board. temperature set properly and the reason why I use both a heat gun and a soldering iron is because one part of a capacitor is ground and ground acts as a heat shield naturally so it's going to dissipate heat well as we're heating it with our soldering iron it's actually going to be cooling it down at the same time so what we do with the heat gun is just go around uh, the capacitor specifically around the ground side uh, that way we are starting to evenly heat up ground as we heat it up with our soldering iron. Uh, therefore, the actual capacitor will lift up easy. But the reason why we're also using tweezers and not just the hot air station is because we're going to be limiting how much heat we actually use right next to the CPU. Anything to limit the chance of potentially frying the CPU or reflowing it, bridging the solder balls underneath it, therefore killing it. So. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back to the microscope camera. Another trick I do to let the components come off easier is I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some of my solder at the same time as I heat up the chip. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a nice size ball of solder. Ooh. There we go, we weren't sucking away air for a second there. All right. So once again, let's go in with our solder. All right, so we got a nice side on both the ground and the voltage, or positive. All right, now we're just applying temperature. All right. And just like that, we got our cap off. I'm gonna go ahead and put this here in the corner. All right, so what else we wanna do is kinda of wick up the solder that's existing here and just put on a better solder. So for that, I'm going to use a flat tipped soldering iron and some goot wick. You can buy goot wick from iPad Rehab's website from Jessa Jones, or you can even purchase some directly from Lewis Rossman at store.rossmangroup.com. I think I've seen it on Amazon, but I think when I saw it on Amazon, um, it was just going to take a really long time to get here. But if you can, go ahead and, and support the other technicians in the repair community. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up a little bit of our flux. Most people, they don't clean up the flux until the end of the repair. I don't ultrasonic this uh, repair just because it's one capacitor. So we're not gonna be putting a whole bunch of flux on the board. If it was liquid damage, yes, absolutely. We would put it in our ultrasonic cleaner to remove any corrosion after the repair, as well as all the flux. However, since it's just this component, I don't really find it necessary. Okay, so now that we got our nice clean pads, let's go ahead, put some more flux onto there, and we're just gonna put a nice mound of solder for our new capacitor. All right, just like that. This is very important too when doing this repair. So if we look back at our capacitor here, we can see that there's a positive side. The positive is gonna be for voltage. 
and then we're going to have uh, on the right side is our ground. With our new capacitor, we have a line right there. Now that line's also going to be our positive. It, it is a massive capacitor. So in the past we would scratch off here into the logic board, but we don't have to do that anymore because we have these fancy capacitors right here. I think they're Panasonic capacitors. And so the edge right here, if I can get that in focus on, on the capacitor, let's, let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so that tip right there that we're seeing right next to the line, that's gonna be our positive. That guy right there is going to be our negative or our ground. Also, this guy right here is also our ground or negative. We can use that as a guide for lining this up. So enough of me rambling on. Let's go ahead and get this soldered. So let's get this in focus. I'm going to add a little bit more flux. Okay. And we'll set our heat gun just a little bit warmer. Since this guy is so huge, we are going to be using only, oh, we're gonna be using only a hot air station for this job. However, with our solder, our solder melts at a lower temperature than the solder that was here originally from the board. So it should go on still with very little to lo a little heat. All right, so we can see the solder coming out of the side. That tells us that we're good. And we're gonna go ahead and touch that up with our micro pencil, just to make that look a lot nicer. So we got to switch tips again. Okay. okay. And just like that, that tiny little ball is gone. Okay, and we're back. I just had to take care of some business real quick. All right, so we got our new capacitor on there. And just to make sure that we don't have a bridge between our ground and our voltage side, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out our multimeter. And if it is bridged, then we'll have a rating of 0 0.0. If everything went according to plan, we should have a resistance of about uh, I've seen it from as low as about 60 ohms. You know, we've had this on here forever. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. There we go. That's a lot better. All right, we got open line. And we're going to make sure this is going to be 0 0.03 because this is our ground. All right, now let's touch our voltage side right here. Cool. Now, as you can see, we still have a rating of about 105 it's not bridged so that is a successful capacitor replacement all right so now as mentioned about the whole um, uh, what was I gonna say flux and ultrasonic cleaning we don't need to do that for this one uh, what I'm actually gonna do heat up the flux just a little bit just to make it a little malleable and then we're gonna use some alcohol and q-tip right, so that should be enough Okay, we have just a little bit of flux in between the capacitor and the coil underneath it. So what I'm gonna do is um, get some alcohol and put it on an electric toothbrush just to get inside that crevice. It really just breaks it up in there. Right, that should be enough for now. I'm gonna set that to the side. Go ahead and try to 
get some of the flux that it threw everywhere off. And then we're going to use our hot air station just to evaporate some of the alcohol. Now that we have successfully replaced our capacitor, we're going to put the board back together. However, it looks like this board has never been opened up before, so I'm just going to go ahead and put some new thermal compound on the GPU and CPU just so that it performs a little bit better. Surprisingly, the thermal paste isn't horrible, but it still could benefit from using a replacement. Now we're going to go ahead and put the board back in, back in the computer. Let's turn this guy on and make sure that it no longer kernel panics. Okay, so it is booting up now. This one still has the original hard drive from 2010, and it's going to be a 320 gig Seagate drive, so it is running slow, and that's normal for a drive of this age. Normal mechanical drives I've noticed are typically around five years before they start to run slow. This is double that expectancy. So this is nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, and not to show the customer's personal data, as we can see right here, it has booted up all the way. I'm just going to go ahead and hide it before any of her data starts showing up. But that is a successful kernel panic repair on the mid-2010 15-inch MacBook Pro logic board. The logic board specifically that has this issue is going to be the 820-2850. Uh, and the capacitor that is in question, always in question, is going to be C9560, which is a polymer polytantalum capacitor. It was just not the suitable capacitor for the job, so we've just replaced it with the correct capacitor. This issue was actually so rampant that Apple actually had a recall on this computer. However, the recall really only lasted for about three months, and some people did get their boards replaced in time. Unfortunately, a lot of people did not get notified that there was a recall pertaining towards this unit. So to this day, we are still seeing a whole bunch of these 820-2850 logic boards 
fortunately, instead of having to replace the logic board, we can just replace that capacitor, bringing life back to the entire computer. I hope this has been enjoyable. Um, if this is something that you enjoyed watching, I will try to get more into the habit of filming these type of repairs. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below. <laughs> uh, thanks again. Bye.